Blackpool Pleasure Beach is undoubtedly one of the most iconic amusement parks in the world, full of history and brimming with nostalgia. However, there seems to be a growing consensus within the British theme park community that the park is in decline. This opinion was supported on the day that the park opened for the 2024 season. Now, March the 2nd did provide a glorious dose of dreadful British weather, which never makes for a perfect theme park day. But even without the cold and the wet to blame, tons else went wrong for Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The weather may go part of the way to explain some of the operational issues the park had on opening day, but it certainly doesn't excuse them all. Revolution was evacuated multiple times. Infusion and the Grand National also suffered from lots of downtime. Avalanche Valley and even the River Caves had to be evacuated. Then, as announced on Twitter by Amanda Thompson at 9.45 a.m. on opening day, the big one was closed all day. Now, as managing director, she was sure to point out that this wasn't her fault, and I'm not going to try to dispute this. Even with all the off-season maintenance in the world, roller coasters can be temperamental. So sure, perhaps this genuinely couldn't be helped, but only announcing this on opening day isn't a great look. More warning would have certainly eased the pain. On top of this, although operational, Dora's World Voyage was running with no sound, and Valhalla was running with no effect. It's a simple fact with theme parks that downtime is bound to happen. It's very hard to avoid, but when it is as prevalent as this, it does seem to suggest that a lack of preparation and maintenance was involved. Another issue many have been pointing to is the staff. Now, it's important to remember that seasonal parks like Blackpool Pleasure Beach have to hire lots of new staff for each season, and so opening days can often be somewhat chaotic. Even all the training in the world can't prepare theme park staff for exactly what they'll have to deal with when actually working with the guests. Add to this all the operational issues and they certainly had their hands full. However, even taking all of this into account doesn't excuse some of the reports from guests. Food service was reported to be atrocious, with orders never even arriving, and many claimed that staff were behaving unprofessionally. Some of these issues were solved by the park's second day, but many remained. For lots of fans of Blackpool Pleasure Beach, experiencing these issues firsthand or reading about them compounded the feeling that Blackpool Pleasure Beach finds itself in a precarious position. So you'd think the company would be doing everything in their power to win fans back. Well, with Blackpool Pleasure Beach, that seems not to be the case. Outside of the park, Upon Twitter of all places, things continued to get worse. Amanda Thompson, managing director of Blackpool Pleasure Beach, announced in a strange way, and once the park was already open, that the Grand Prix would not operate this year as they are planning a new attraction. She followed this up with a demand to not ask any more questions, as she will tell us when she has made a decision. I must say, it does seem strange to close a ride for the season that could still be operational without having decided yet what will replace it. Then, we were lectured for calling the PlayStation Drop Tower Ice Blast, despite that still being the name of the attraction on both the app and the website, and there being no theming or even carriages present to suggest otherwise. We were told this attraction, whatever you wish to call it, would be operating later this season. But taking a quick look at the current state of the attraction, it's understandable why many believe otherwise. Speaking of social media, it was here that we all first saw Blackpool Pleasure Beach's new logo for the first time. That is, before the colours were changed and another new logo was revealed within 48 hours. With such well-prepared and steadfast decisions, it doesn't come as much of a surprise that the park itself seemingly wasn't well-prepared for opening day. If only attraction issues could be solved as easily as a quick logo colour change. The logo itself has not been met with much love by fans, but the redesign does fit in line with many changes to logos done by a variety of brands over the last few years, including many theme parks. If you are interested in this trend, we recently released a video all about this. So please check it out after watching the rest of this video, of course. Beyond just the logo change, Blackpool Pleasure Beach actually rebranded back in February to Pleasure Beach Resort. 
And this rebrand also came with a new tagline, which was, it's more than you think. Pleasure Beach have said that this change is the start of a more modern era for the par, and stated that they can no longer rely on their surroundings, history, or heritage to attract guests. As we pointed out in our video on logos, Forbes report that brand consistency is one of the most important components for any brand. Something Blackpool Pleasure Beach seems to be struggling with. It's never an easy transition to go from calling a park one thing to another. I'm sure many of us still stumble and call Disney Springs Downtown Disney or Hollywood Studios MGM Studios. So it's pretty expected that fans will take a while to get used to such a change. But the park itself and all its branding and merchandise, well, there should be no such problem there. But with Blackpool Pleasure Beach, this change does not seem to be a smooth one. On merchandise and signage, three different names could be found. Pleasure Beach Resort, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and Pleasure Beach Lancashire. Upon hearing the latter, you might be wondering if the park is selling merchandise for another new park that has opened up in Lancashire. But no, this merchandise is being sold at the right place. If Blackpool Pleasure Beach don't think they can rely on Blackpool to sell the park, I'm not sure what they think Lancashire has to offer by being added to the name. The removal of Blackpool from the park's name makes little sense in my opinion. The reputation of Blackpool is well known. Some of this negative, but taking Blackpool out of the name doesn't change the fact that the park is located in Blackpool. Honestly, the choice of Lancashire over Blackpool for the name seems incredibly misguided and somewhat pretentious. I also believe that the British seaside history is one of the things that makes Blackpool Pleasure Beach so iconic and appealing. Perhaps no longer able to be relied on alone to attract guests to the park, the park's historic place, connotated largely by its name, is still important to many. The decline in popularity of Blackpool as a tourist destination is a well-known story that has played out across many seaside resorts in Britain, but the last couple of summers have actually seen a rise in tourism to Blackpool. Despite this, even on a busy weekend, the park has often remained rather quiet. More effort catering the park to the audience that Blackpool attracts would to me seem far more effective than trying to cater to a completely different market. It's much easier to get those already visiting Blackpool into the park than trying to attract a whole new group to the area. Personally, I believe a key way to get more people spending money at Pleasure Beach would be to bring back the walk around pass. Families staying a week or even just a weekend in Blackpool may be much more likely to incorporate a visit to the park into their stay if there is a cheaper ticket option for family members who do not wish to ride the rides. Then, Blackpool Pleasure Beach could once again seamlessly blend itself into a visitor's general exploration of the area. Also, keeping the park open later more often would help allowing those staying locally more opportunity to enjoy the park during their limited stay. There's also the issue that many theme park enthusiasts may well just be opting to purchase a Merlin annual pass and save visiting parks like Blackpool Pleasure Beach for rare and special occasions. The Merlin pass is incredibly cost effective, so it makes sense that it has become the most popular ticket for UK enthusiasts to have. Back in 2018, when Icon opened, things seemed pretty promising for Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This was the first time the park had opened a new roller coaster since 2007, and it was a good one. Needless to say, we UK theme park enthusiasts were very excited, but six years later, it's safe to suggest that the promise of Icon has not been sustained. Valhalla was refurbished, something we were all excited to see. But with numerous delays and an underwhelming end product, which features scaled back scenes and the still present issues of flooding boats, this over budget project feels like a bit of a waste. Then there's the Wild Mouse, removed back in 2017 to make way for future developments that have still not materialized, a fact which doesn't make many of us too hopeful for the promised replacement of the Grand Prix. Blackpool Pleasure Beach seems to refuse to listen to guests. As far as quality is concerned, it's pretty clear that Blackpool Pleasure Beach is never going to compete with the likes of Thought Park and Dalton Towers. This isn't surprising as these parks have the monetary backing of a major corporation in Merlin, but this kind of thing isn't actually necessary for Blackpool Pleasure Beach to make itself a success. 
The park shouldn't strive to be a theme park and should instead thrive on being a seaside amusement park. It is this historic uniqueness that makes the place so special. Attractions like the Ghost Train and River Caves don't offer world-class theming by any stretch of the imagination, but their charm is in their historic legacies. The closure of attractions such as Noah's Ark and the Wild Mouse have resulted in the loss of some of this charm, but it isn't all gone. Instead of letting the park's classics fall into disarray, as can be seen by the teared up seats on many of the wooden coasters, the park should focus more time and money on maintaining these. Blackpool Pleasure Beach doesn't need to build a record-breaking coaster or a pricey dark ride. Instead, they simply need to lean into their identity, provide more care to what they already have, and stop being hostile to fans on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think could save Blackpool Pleasure Beach? Let us know in the comments. Please also leave a like on this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my social media links in the description. Oh, and don't forget to watch my previous video all about theme park logos. Thanks again.